Peace and love, family, peace and love. I hope you're having an amazing day. Hope this video finds you feeling absolutely wonderful. Excuse my hair, excuse everything. I am officially three days postpartum and this is, let's say like my third or fourth time actually just getting outside. And I was gonna go do my hair and all that stuff, but I was like, forget it. I just wanna be as raw and authentic as possible. <laughs> Phoenix just got back from the beach with her nanny. Oh my goodness. You have fun at the beach? Yeah? So real quick, well not real quick. I wanted to actually record a video um, on my birth experience here in Costa Rica. So before I give you all the details, let me just tell you, this experience was extremely euphoric. It was amazing. I really didn't think I would talk about a childbirth in this way. And um, choosing to birth in Costa Rica gave me a completely different outlook on free birthing. So some of you may know, some of you may not know, but I do have an older daughter. She'll be two in April. And she also was a home birth. With her birth, we had a midwife, <clears throat> we had a doula, we um, had a birthing pool. We did all the things um, that were in alignment with a, a water home birth. <clears throat> but as I reflect on my first birth and this birth, um, it was still very much westernized. So my midwife, she still had all the tools in case of a medical emergency, everything had to be sterilized the pool had to be a certain temperature everything was protocol opposed to this birth was completely free completely free there weren't any gloves um when rose got here shout out to rose big big shout out to rose i'll tell y'all about her in a minute but when rose got here she just was like turn off the lights burn some incense and my mom had already put on andre 3000 his new album his new blue moon album so that was already playing it was just, we set the, the, the tone, opposed to my first birth, my midwife set the tone. She had everything in place, like I said, in the event of a medical emergency. So there was already the subconscious prep for something to go wrong. And this time there wasn't. Um, my team just let my baby lead and my team just let me guide and everything was in my hands. And I didn't feel, I just felt free. And I look at the difference between which uh, when I was in when I gave birth to Phoenix, I was in labor for 12 hours. My my water broke. I'll never forget. I went to Taco Mac with my mom and my dad. And <laughs> while we were at Taco Mac, I was having some contractions, but I didn't realize they were contractions. And then um, when I got home, I remember getting ready for bed. I went to the kitchen to get some water. And when I went in the kitchen, my water broke, but it wasn't like a intense gush of water. It was basically, it just felt like I peed on myself a little bit. And I was like, hmm, that was strange. I didn't pay any attention to it. And then a couple of hours went by and I started to feel some contractions. They weren't intense. So then I finally uh, said something to my mother. I was like, I think my water broke. She was like, well, how long ago was that? And then I told her, so we called the midwife and the midwife was like, yeah, that was your water breaking. And at this point it's like 11 PM. And so um, she said, get some rest, drink some water. She'll be over first thing in the morning. So um, let's see, she got there like 6 AM. And when she arrived, that's when, oh, I think I hear the baby. Hold on one second y'all. My, my water broke, my midwife came over first thing in the morning, and it's like as soon as she arrived, the contractions just got really intense, and we just began to monitor them. She was checking to see how dilated I was. It was very medical, and that was okay. So we kept, we started the preparation for the actual birth itself. Uh, we called everyone that we wanted to know, and, um, 12 hours later, Phoenix was born and she was born in the birthing pool. Um, my midwife was actually training, another midwife in training. So there was a lot of, it was a lot, <laughs> it was a lot. But at the time 
you know, um, I didn't have anything to compare it to, so it was blissful. Uh -oh. It was amazing. So long story short, fast forward, here we are in Costa Rica and my prenatal visits are, were in the, in the jungle in a cave with waterfalls and crystals. And then when I leave, I can go straight to the beach. Um, no medical equipment at all. Like not, it doesn't even have Wi-Fi there. And uh, leading up to the birth, um, it was a normal day for us. We got up, we got on our bikes, we went to a place to have breakfast. After we had breakfast, we went to the beach so that I could work a little bit. Um, I had to take a Zoom call. We went to the beach. Um, after my Zoom call, we just hung out at the beach for a little bit. We had some lunch and then I felt the urge to take a nap. So when we got back home, I decided to lay down and take a nap. And I woke up mid nap like, oh, what is this feeling? I went to the bathroom. After I used the bathroom, I was like, something ain't right here. <laughs> like, there's this tightening in my stomach that is a little bit uncomfortable. So I told my mother what I was feeling. She was like, okay, no, no problem. I mean, what what do you want to do so we ended up um i went to go lay back down woke up again and i was like i think these are contractions so let me start timing them so i opened up the notepad in my phone and started to document hey girl so i opened up a notepad in my phone and started to track the contractions and they went from being five minutes apart two minutes apart one time it was just like 30 seconds apart and I was like yeah so I think I'm in active labor so I called um, my mother and she just kind of set the tone in the house for me we had already talked about what I wanted in terms of music um, aromatherapy I wanted water I wanted fruits so my mama had all that stuff already ready for me she started giving me pineapples and star fruit and um, we were just going through the motions and then we called Rose, who is such an incredibly amazing woman. We called her, she said she was on her way. She got here in like 15 minutes. And within an hour of her arriving, we had the baby. And basically once she arrived, she started to apply pressure. So she started to apply counter pressure to my contractions. And I was in the bathroom on the floor on all fours and she was applying pressure um to my contractions and we stayed in the bathroom for about 30 minutes and i was just on all fours on the bathroom floor and then there was a moment where i knew it was time and i just remember speaking out loud to the to my baby basically saying like okay 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 that's the only thing i could say i i could just kept saying okay okay so I knew intuitively uh, I was getting ready. She was coming. I knew she was on her way. So, hey, mama. You want to say hello? Uh, hey, y'all. How was the beach? Happy. How was the beach? Like, uh, uh, who, do you, who do you have right there? Oh. Uh, uh, Hi, everybody. There you go. There you go. You're welcome, baby. So with that being said, um, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I was all in all for Yeah. Uh -huh. You wanna go get some water? Go give the doggy some water? Here, go give the doggy some water. Go ask Omi if the doggy can have some water and a snack. <laughs> so um, I was on all four, so about 30 minutes, and then intuitively I knew she was coming. So I just kept saying out loud, okay, okay. And I could feel and hear my daughter say, mom, I'm coming. And out loud, I was just like, okay, baby, okay, okay. So I told Rose, I need to stand up. She was like, okay, what do you wanna do next? You wanna go lay down? I was like, yeah. I walked into the bedroom and I was about to lay down, but when I lifted up my right knee, here she was coming out. I felt this push and this contraction and I was like, oh, it's, she's coming it's time so I put my foot back down I just bent over the bed Rose continued to massage my lower back mm -hmm. hi hi 
how are you today? Oh, okay. Do, can you can you go play with him? And mommy's gonna finish this video. I'm telling, I'm talking about how, when your sister was born. So from there, Rose continued to massage my lower back, and um, it was just awesome. And there was like one. There was a few contractions, but there was that one good, good, good contraction where baby just came. And I felt that gush of water just burst everywhere. And I put my hand, I reached down and I could feel her head. And Rose just kept saying, um, she was uh, she was like, your baby is here, greet your baby. So I reached down, I was gonna try to catch her, but there was a pause where her head was out but I had no more push left and her, you know, she still need, her body wasn't out yet. So I was like a little bit tired. So I put my hands back on the bed and I was instructed to try to push one more time so she can come out. But I kid you not, like 60 seconds went by and baby was halfway out of my vagina and I just had no more push in that moment. And then I just remember communing with, with her, basically saying, come on, baby, we got this. We got this, you're almost here. You're almost here, my love. You're almost here. And then, boom, came that last contraction. And my mom was the catcher. And, yeah, so she she dropped right into my mother's arms. And, yeah, my mama caught her. Um, I stood in that position for a little bit because I was just so, felt high almost. I immediately felt high. So I just stood there, and I was just thinking, like, dang, we did that. Like, we really did that. And I just stood there, stood there. And that's the thing, like my team never forced me to do anything. They just let me be. They were there for support, but they let me be. When I gave birth to Phoenix, it was protocol, protocol, protocol. Wrap the baby up, um, wipe the baby off. Like, there were so many things that had to happen right after I pushed Phoenix out. And this time, everybody was like, whatever you want to do now but I will say this um she had a knot in her umbilical cord so we did have to loosen the umbilical cord so that she could get the you know the blood could um, flow to her and she can continue to get oxygen through the umbilical cord but it was just ease and flow it was slow pace nobody was demanding me to do anything I didn't want to do even as far as my placenta I was like don't ask me for the placenta. Like, I just want to birth the placenta naturally. Don't talk about it. Don't worry about her. Let me just be. And um, I, I got my baby. I turned around. I sat on the floor. And I just sat there. And I was looking at her just in awe. And I was reflecting on everything. And the smell of patchouli. Oh, it's a beautiful hummingbird right here. The incense. It was just awesome. It was so awesome. So I sat on the floor just looking at her and I just sat there. And um, then I asked for some assistance to actually get in the bed. And they helped me carry her into the bed with me. And um, I just laid in the bed and just <laughs> reflected on everything and took it all in. And the room, the lights in the room were super dim. And then there was like this small little light coming from the diffuser that just really did something for me. And yeah, it was so awesome, y'all. So, 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 so awesome. And let's see, that was 7.35. She was born at 7.35. And I, after, let's see, afterwards, uh, Rose made me some teas. My mama made me a soup. Um, I drank water. I ate some more fruits. I went and took a shower and I got in the bed. I got in the bed with my baby and we went to sleep. Phoenix slept with Omi and we had a good night's sleep. Actually, no, I woke up at like four, four o'clock. Um, but we slept good other than that. And that's my birth story. So it was very uneventful. Um, no meds, no medical intervention and just me and my team and like I said they let me just be in full total control of the entire of the entire experience 
and I really appreciated that. And even today, Rose came and made me more soup. She came to make sure that I didn't need a foot massage and that like they're just mothering me. They mothered me during childbirth. They're mothering me now. And they're just really making sure that I have everything I need on every single level. And I just am super grateful. And so leading up to choosing to birth in Costa Rica, um, I was in a very, very, very rough space mentally. And it got to a point where I didn't even feel like I was capable of birthing. I didn't feel like I had what it took to have a natural birth. I didn't even think, honestly, I didn't think that I was gonna make it through pregnancy. Um, early in my pregnancy, um, my child's father, his mother called me one day and basically told me that I was gonna either have a miscarriage or I was gonna have a premature birth. And that never left my mind, um, especially at the time when she said that to me, I was early, early pregnancy. So it was just something that I subconsciously thought about. Every time there was an ache, every time I had any type of adverse feelings, I immediately was thinking to myself, like, oh my God, am I about to have a miscarriage? Like, oh my. So there was this fear that was present. And then there were so much external things that were causing disharmony um, within me. And so I needed to make a decision for my own health, for the health of the baby. And I decided that mentally, it was best for me to do what's best for me. And I intuitively felt that I needed to change my environment. I needed to be in an environment where I have support, an environment where I'm able to commune with nature. I needed to be in a place where there wasn't a lot of chatter and also a place where people don't have access to me. I was like, I know if I think about this too long, I'm not gonna do it. So within 72 hours, I made a decision to go back to Costa Rica, to come back here to Costa Rica during my, my last trimester with a baby. And birth, here we are, postpartum, a less than a three hour late childbirth, feeling free and peaceful as ever. I can say that I made the best decision for me and my children. So as I close this video, I want you to know that doing what's best for you might feel a little bit scary. You might have some guilt associated with doing what's best for you. But baby, if you intuitively feel like something is better for you, do it. And I'm sharing my story not to make anyone feel bad or not to make anyone look bad or not to tell my business. I'm sharing my story because I was suffering in silence. And that's not fair. I suffered in silence while carrying a baby. A woman that is pregnant is the most powerful entity on this in this world. Women are the only creations that can actually usher a non-physical being into the physical realm. That needs to be praised, honored, celebrated. And I'm sharing this because I suffered in silence for too long and it almost took me out of here, if I can just be real. I considered like a psychiatric ward, yeah, like mid-pregnancy because there was so much stress for me. I'm sharing my story because um, I just want everyone to know that it's not too late to make a decision that's best for you. And like I said, when you choose what's best for you, everything unfolds perfectly. It's just you getting out of your own way and having the strength and the power to say, I'm choosing me. That is my birth story. And I appreciate you for tuning in and listening. Um, and also, yeah, so being here in Costa Rica, another benefit, uh, I was able to, like, I was active. Like, I rode my bike the, up until the day I went into labor. I ultimately believe that is one of the things that contributed to a very healthy and successful labor but anyway shout out to my mother for the sacrifices that she also made and continued to make in order to be present and to show up for me in the ways that i need for her to support me and to show up for me because at the end of the day there's nothing that comes close to a mother's love and a mother's support and i'm happy that i have that so like i said if you have any additional questions and stuff like that comment them below or you can DM me on Instagram or whatever you feel. I will share more um, 
uh, videos on just living in Costa Rica, my mother circle here in Costa Rica, postpartum support that I have and everything. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Peace.